welcome to my channel. My name's Jean and I'm from happyindulgencebooks.com. Today I'm going to talk about the 12 books that I read during November. This month there weren't that many new releases so I ended up picking up a lot of books from the library which I showed you guys in my library book haul video. I'll link it if, in case you missed it. But oh, it was just amazing just how many great reads there were. I got to catch up on a lot of reads that I've been meaning to get to for a while and I absolutely loved a lot of them. I think I only had one dud this month and I'll show you guys what it is in a minute. So the first book I read was Sleeping Giants by Sylvia Newville. Oh, I just posted a review of Sleeping Giants up on my blog and I absolutely loved it. It helped me get over my three week Gemini slump. I was just obsessing about that book so much and I needed something similar but just as good to get me out of it and Sleeping Giants was the answer. Basically it's a book about discovering a giant robot on earth and the scientific and political implications of that. So you've got this unnamed narrator and he he sounds like he's part of the secret service. It doesn't quite tell you and it's for you to figure out. But he goes around uh, recruiting people onto this giant robot project. And it's a really exciting project when they discover it and they try and find pieces all over the world. It actually makes you think a lot about the political power play that gets involved whenever there's an interesting discovery. And things, there's so many twists and turns and things don't work out the way that you think. I love sci-fi. If you love the way Illuminate or Gemini is written, this one is also written in interviews and diaries. Yeah, this one is uh, adult sci-fi read. I gave it five stars and I really highly recommend it. I also picked up When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie Miklamore. When the Moon Was Ours is a magical realism story and it's about a girl called Mille who has roses growing out of her hands and the guy called Sam and he's actually a transgender guy who is Pakistani. He was born a woman but he's actually acting as a guy for the comfort of his family which is a Pakistani tradition. But then as the story goes on you learn that Sam has really taken on board the male identity and is beautiful because Mille really accepts who he is, she helps him through. And I love seeing this acceptance of the diverse representations of the characters. It was written in such a beautiful way. Now you may think, you know, roses growing out of your hands, that's not particularly believable, but the author writes it in such a beautiful manner and you just can't help but be wrapped up in the enchanting words and it was a really beautiful setting. It gave me all the feels about this romance. You just love their acceptance of each other. And there's a lot that both of them are dealing with as well uh, from the girls that are bullying them because of their differences and there's a lot of magic in here as well. So When the Moon Was Ours was a really enchanting, diverse and different read. I gave this one five stars as well. Probably doesn't surprise anyone but I ended up rereading re Gemini by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. You know how much I love this book. I've been raving on about it on Twitter and every single platform. Uh, the reread was actually quite good because I got to find out a lot of linkages to Illuminae and then like you pick up so much more that you may have missed in the first read. So I absolutely loved it. Of course I gave it another 5 stars. I also picked up Every Heart a Doorway by Shona McGuire and oh this book was another fantasy diverse read. It has quite a magical setting so it's about these children who go into a world where they can feel accepted and not judged by anyone else. What I loved about this book was just how many forms of diversity it featured and also I really loved the setting. It felt like really enchanting. For example there's some people there from the real life world which is more of a contemporary setting but then you've got people coming there from a fantasy setting and then you hear about these kids and their backgrounds and what they're dealing with and the answer is always the same. They're always dealing with some sort of prejudice. It's this school of children where they're taught not to 
judge others, to accept everyone openly, find out more about each other, and it was just such a beautiful story. But you can see how short of a book it is and it really packs a punch. I loved how it also broke down the rules of gender identity. There's also a murder and mystery in here. I don't know how she fit it all in, but it all worked out really well. I gave Every Heart a Doorway 4.5 stars. I've just finished reading The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Khoury and I gave this one 4.5 stars. I was a bit hesitant about reading it because I heard that it centred on the romance. That was not the case at all. It's actually a Middle Eastern Aladdin retelling and the twist here is that the genie is a female called Zara and she's looking for the same thing she's looking to escape and for her freedom and helping out aladdin will is her best way of getting into the palace to release the king of Ginny's son it was hilarious because both aladdin and zara they both have their own goals and they're using each other to get there but somehow somehow they find each other falling in love and then realizing by the end of the book that you know love wins over everything it was just such a beautiful story and I thought it was a really successful Aladdin retelling. You know, retellings can always go either way. And I loved Zara. I thought she was a really strong character. There's a lot of girl power in here. There's lots of great female characters. Aladdin was also a really cheeky, charming character as you know him. Now this book gave me so many feels towards the end. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. I really recommend The Forbidden Wish if you love Aladdin or if you just love the Middle Eastern setting. Now onto my four star reads. I read Girl Against the Universe by Paula Stokes. I was looking for a book that was a bit lighter to help get me through, you know, my reading slump at the time. And Girl Against the Universe was perfect for that. It's funny because within the first few pages, I was like, oh my god, it's going to be about anxiety, it's going to be about grief, and it's going to make my heart explode, and I'm not ready for this. But then as the story goes along, it's just such a cute story about both Maguire and Geordie. They kind of crept up on me because they were just really charming and Geordie is like the perfect guy who Maguire thought she'll never end up with. But then she learns a lot more about him. And it was just so cute. I wasn't such a fan of the tennis sections because I don't love sport at all, but it was great that the characters had something to focus on. Girl Against the Universe is more of a cute contemporary read. It's quite light as well, but it does dig deeper into anxiety and other mental health issues as well. So this one I gave four stars to. I also picked up I'll Meet You There by Heather Demetrios. Oh, it was such a such an emotional book that fills you with emotion because of what the characters are going through. So both Skylar and Josh come from different walks of life, uh, but they meet when they're working in a hotel. And Skylar, her mum is an alcoholic, she's living in a trailer, and they come from a low socioeconomic background. She's always been dreaming of leaving the town, and getting a scholarship elsewhere so she can escape. But the thing that holds her back is her mum's spiral into depression and into bad choices. Then comes Josh, and Josh is really bitter and depressed. He's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. He's come back from the war and he's lost a leg, so he walks around with a prosthetic piece. And it was just so full of feels, just how each of these characters struggled so much. But then they also struggle together because each of them are dealing with a tough circumstance. It's like they found solace in helping each other. What I really liked about the book as well is Skylar's social economic status. I think this must be the first time I've heard of a character that actually stresses about where the food is going to come from and about how they're going to pay for their, their next meal. And it was really gut-wrenching. And Josh as well, you don't really hear much from him, but there are a few chapters uh, that are quite short and he's addressing it to an unknown person. You find out who it is at the end of the book and it's really gut-wrenching. I loved hearing about Josh and Skylar in I'll Meet You There and both of them are characters that will really reach out and grab you and hold you by the heart. 
I gave it, I'll meet you there, four stars. My Best Friend is a Goddess by Tara Eglinton was my next read. I really love books that focus on friendship as the key theme of the book rather than romance because when you think about it, everyone has friends and you can relate to it and also the nuances about female friendships should be explored a lot further because it's something that we can, we look to and rely on. My Best Friend is a Goddess uh, really explored a best friendship in depth. So you've got Emily and Adriana. Adriana comes home, she was severely bullied by her classmates about being different and Emily has always been there to stick up for her and they've kept in contact through online chats. Over the course of the book you find them slowly drifting apart. Adriana has come back and she looks like a supermodel and this has Emily hung up on her own insecurities about her appearance. She's not ugly by any chance but she surely doesn't look like Adriana. Slowly but surely Adriana gets sucked up into the popular crowd. The main wedge that drives them apart is actually a guy that comes between them. So this might sound really high schooly and cliche but I thought it was actually dealt with in a really mature and realistic way. These things slowly wedge them apart. It's not the guy or the friends or the popular crowd or even Instagram that drives them apart. It's their lack of communication and thinking that they're doing the best thing for each other. I thought it was quite sad just how broken Adriana was inside and she like she does come back transformed and really beautiful but then she knows it and she's using that to be another person because she doesn't want to be remembered as the Adriana that she was before. This book felt really realistic and heart crushing because I don't know about you but I've been through this similar situation about losing a best friend and it is very gut-wrenching so it felt really realistic and if you love books that focus on female friendships I recommend My Best Friend is a Goddess. It's an Aussie YA read that should be out now. The next book is Paper and Fire by Rachel Kane, and this is the next book in the Great Library series. The first book which was Ink and Bone and this is a high fantasy steampunk series set in a diverse setting. There's automatons guarding the Great Library. The Great Library holds all of the knowledge and controls it. It's actually quite a deep, well-built fantasy setting and I think it's really unique. If you love books, you'll really appreciate the nuances that went into the building of this book. Paper and Fire felt really much like a middle book. It's interesting because my key pet peeve about fantasies is when they don't go into the world building enough and Paper and Fire really develops it a lot more. All, all of these students now have gone out into the world, they've been appointed their uh, different position. Now that they're all segregated, it felt like it was going off into different directions until Jess Brightwell comes back and brings them back together. The characters are all brilliantly diverse. They're all from different countries and cultures and there is a great LGBT relationship in here in the form of the teachers. If you're looking for steampunk, diversity, fantasy and a setting around libraries and books, this is your series to go to. I gave this one four stars. I also read Swarm, which is the second book in the Zero series by Scott Westerfeld, Margaret Lanigan and Deborah Biancotti. And Swarm really upped the ante when it came to the superpowers that these kids had. It also added a dark villain in there which was really interesting. Swarm was actually quite unexpected because it took a lot of a darker turn to Zeros than I expected it to be. Zeros was actually a lot of fun. Uh, you learn about these superhero kids that are just trying to fit in and are just playing around with their powers but then in this book they discover that there's more people around there like them. It was actually quite crazy because it was so gory and bloody and that's not what I expected at all. I felt like a lot of the kids felt really angsty at times. Even though it was Christmas time, it's like they were either alone, forgotten or had no family and it was just like there was just so much angst here. I gave Swarm three stars. 
Uh, well, it was a lot of fun. I also felt like there was a lot of angst and frustration that I felt with it too. Forgetting Foster is an Aussie YA read uh, that actually covers a seven-year-old character. I'm not a fan of heartbreaking reads, but this one was actually done really well. Especially written from a seven-year-old's point of view. It's like um, he understands enough to know what's going on when his dad suddenly gets Alzheimer's, when he's you know, in his 40s or 50s, he's still relatively young and he's witnessing uh, his mom's depression and his mom trying to come to terms with his dad and getting frustrated with him. And then also his dad not remembering things at all and he's like a shade of his old self. Now the descent into Alzheimer's is something that is quite depressing and it's quite sad. Foster as well, it's like he's a seven year old boy that's really forced to grow up yet all the adults around him are just sort of ignoring him and going oh this isn't your problem but he is dealing with it i thought it was a really well done read and it was really charming but oh it's so sad so this one was three stars for me my only two star book was replica by lauren oliver Replica is a beautiful book, you can see that, and the appeal here is that it actually has two different stories on either side. Uh, so Lyra is a replica and she's she's brought up in a lab environment with other replicas. She's sort of escaped and she wants to understand the world in front of her. There's Gemma who wants to learn more about where her dad used to work and about her past. Their stories will converge and they'll meet up and you'll see what happens when they do. It was really interesting the way the story was written but it was also annoying sort of you know flipping from one side to the other because what I did was I read a chapter from each side and turned the book around. I think if you only read one side of the book at a time things will become quite repetitive on the other side of the book. So I didn't like how both Lyra and Gemma felt like really bland characters. Gemma there's a bit of a love triangle situation here. It feels a bit of like a contemporary romance but her love interest is a guy that's termed pervy. Pervy Pete. As Gemma gets to know him she's like nah you're not pervy I'll call you Pete. As a reader that really put me off. Lyra on the other hand had a bit of a romance thing going on as well and I'm like out of everything going on you would think Lyra would have more adjusting to the society but all of that was ignored. There's lots of twists here and like I just wasn't into the characters at all. I ended up giving Replica two stars. I know lots of people rave about it because of this concept but this is the fifth Lauren Oliver book I've actually read and I think she's great with interesting concepts but not so great on the execution. So these are all the books that I read during November. I read 12 of them and luckily I ended up loving most of them. I hope you guys find a book that you really like this month and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you pick up any of my recommendations or you're looking for more yourself leave a comment down below. If you want to see more as always please subscribe to my channel. Thanks guys I'll catch you guys next time bye!